So I'm here at Carahan Tepe, about 20 or 30 miles east of San Liurfa. Behind me is the largest stone at the site. Now most of the site is buried, but this 18 foot monolith is on the western edge of this rocky outcrop on the Tec Tec Mountains uh, here in ancient Anatolia, not far from the Siri and border. Uh, it's an impressive site. There's avenues of T-pillars leading up to the top. There's a, it looks like there's circles here as well, or ovals like we find at Gebekli Tepe. But it's this stone here which really grabs my attention because this is 18 feet tall. One of the largest, if not the largest, that would have been at the site. And what we also see here is evidence of cut marks, which we find at Gebekli Tepe and other sites. We find evidence of um, you know working with stone we find uh, porthole stones we find other evidence of ancient technology here liz here spotted these very interesting carvings on the unfinished monolith this looks like a kind of circle or a hoop we have an indent here and we have some what look could be straight lines going down here uh, so this is very intriguing that there could be some carvings actually on the unfinished monolith here at Karahan Tepe. Obviously we have these huge carvings, these sort of cut around the bottom part of the stone all the way across there. But obviously it was left here partly, I think, because it was part of a tradition that had to be maintained by the stonemasons. It's about 30 or 40 miles east of San Liurfa and Gebekli Tepe. It's a couple of thousand years younger than Gebekli Tepe, but Karahan Tepe is this natural, on this natural rocky outcrop with almost like avenues, twin avenues of T-pillars leading up to the top, mainly on the eastern and southern side maybe. But on the western side, we have this giant, huge 18 foot unfinished monolith part that would have been erected probably as the main part of the site or it may have been deliberately left here which is a tradition that we find all over the world like Easter Island the largest Moai is left in the quarry the blue stones from Stonehenge you can see where they came from and there's a geodetic connection between them as one in Egypt the granite quarry even at Gebekli Tepe there's a 24 foot monolith still in the quarry there amongst others there's a few other ones there as well but to find this here it does suggest that this tradition existed not only at the time of Karahan Tepe, but even at the time of Gebekli Tepe. And this just shows you how they did it. You can see down the edges, all the quarry marks and so on and so forth. And it's on the western side, so that could represent death or even the sunset or even the end of their era. Maybe they decided to leave it here when they moved on from this area. Now, this site is very strange. It's kind of looks like it's been covered up since it was uh, put out of use about seven or 8,000 years ago, or it naturally is covered up with debris and wind over the millennia. Essentially, there are a series of pairs of standing stones that most of them are uh, unexplored, like this one. Some of them have got test pits around them. Or you won't really see any carvings. You might see a little bit. And these are the same type of stones at Gebekli Tepe, but they're completely unexcavated at this time. The big difference between Gebekli Tepe and here is that this is, a, 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 this is not a hill that's been created as an occupational mound. This is a natural hill. Um, and all they've done is to cover the top and the sides uh, with a stone uh, rubble uh, and also earth, and they've buried the stones within them. Uh, and if you ask actually what's going on, we've tried to plot as many of the stones as we could, and it does seem as if they all seem to be focusing on the top of the hill on the northern side. Not here, but that, that place a little bit far, further, farther up there. And they've all, they've all come together, you'll see them. All of them seem to be coming up in lines towards this spot. Now, whether that's avenues, whether that's a series of, of enclosures, but if you go to the south, there's nothing at all. All of the, 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 the flints and flakes and the rest of it are on the north side, on the east side, some on the west side, nothing on the south side. 
that tends to suggest to me that this area was the main area of, of activity. Why? Because I think that they were interested in that, that hill there. Um, that hill basically is full of caves and they are the only caves in the area. And uh, myself and Hugh uh, and one of, the, the, of our team members in the past uh, have investigated them as much as we can and there is prehistoric activity on the top there. Uh, I've got an article ready to go essentially on it, uh, but there is absolute evidence of activity going back at least to 8000 BC. Uh, and that's never been properly written about. I mean, I've, there is an article that online that I've done which shows pictures of those caves, mm -hmm. uh, which give some insight into what's happening up there, but we've, got, we've been back there and we've got more information. So why that particular hill? Well, firstly, the age of this site is from around 8,500 down to about 7,500. You'll notice that the stones are much smaller uh, and most of them, from what we can see, are unmarked. There is no carvings on them. This suggests a very late phase of activity and they're doing something different here. The strong sense is that these zigzagging avenues are very serpent-like in nature and that uh, imagery has found, been found on some of the carved stones, the carved tea pillars of serpents. What's interesting about that hill then? If it is the caves that are significant, what do they actually mean? Well, uh, what I suggest in, in the article is that they represent points of entry into an underworld, um, almost into some realm that's going to take you towards the place of the afterlife. Um, and if you were here in around 8,500 BC and you were here at night, you would see every main star of Cygnus set directly down into the horizontal surface of that hill. And it's actually known as Cachelli. Cachelli. Uh, now this is a word which can mean uh, various things, goat, it can also mean bald head, uh, but it, it also is the name of, it can also mean woman, it's a name associated with woman. Uh, it can mean queen, it can mean daughter, uh, and I actually think that the original root of this has a female personality to it, and it was seen as somehow some kind of symbolic place of rebirth within a womb, very much like in ancient Egypt, with a symbolic rebirth of the soul within the womb of the sky goddess Nuit. the cut marks all over the exposed bedrock. Plus it does appear as if there is some kind of, of steps that um, may once have formed part of a rise or, or maybe they form the edge of a, an enclosure that's now vanished. Don't know, but they certainly do seem quite step-like. Oh, here, everybody, have a look at this. It's a tea pillar here on the ground. Here's one here that's been partially excavated with a test pit around it. So th th this is what they would call a test pit. You know, they're basically cutting down and just seeing what they find. See here, we've got one stone over there in the north, one here in the south, and then more here, so, and down there. It's, it's almost like a circle, yeah. 
They're every, I mean, there's a lot here. It's a lot. And there's even more down here. Going all the way down here. And if we get a chance, walk down in this field here because there are pieces of carving and stuff. Carved windows, you know, portals. Here at Karahan Tepe, we can see evidence of carved stone going back at least 10,000 years. What I have in front of me is the L shape of a portal stone, uh, a rectilinear portal stone uh, that would have been the entrance into one of the enclosures, probably around 10,000 years ago. I mean, it's quite remarkable that something like this, if you found it in England, you'd say it was off of a, a medieval building, but out here, it's 10,000 years ago that these people were making these extraordinary uh, enclosures uh, with this type of technology. And here it is just lying out here, you know, just at the base of, of Karahan Tepe. And now we have a beautiful sunset just occurring here over the Tek Tek Mountains. You can see that there, isn't that beautiful? Just to finish off a wonderful day exploring Karahan Tepe and the ancient city of San Leofa.